Ah, oh. you know, we had 11 o'clock service last night, so I thought maybe we'd do something different this morning. We'd see how long you'd play. Then we'd call it, wor then we'd call it worship. <laughs> Go in peace. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you all. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. God's grace through Christ is offered to everyone, so know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, Whatever you're going through, you are welcome here today. It, it isn't often that we get to have church, our Sunday morning worship, for Christmas Day. And uh, it's kind of special, I think, to do it this way. So um, let's enjoy this morning. Uh, I want to start with a couple of announcements, if I might. First of all, if you sponsored a um, poinsettia after service today, now would be the time to start taking them with you. Uh, I think I think we're we're at our maintenance maximum today uh, between Diane and Nancy. I, I don't know if they want to babysit any longer. So take your children home. Um, we will be having service uh, next Sunday, which will be January first, New Year's Day, and 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 ask yourself and be ready for this when we come next week. Are you the person? that it's had a great year, and your prayers are, Lord, please don't change a thing? Or have you had the tough year, and your prayers are, Lord, I need you to fix this? And we'll talk about that next week. Because we all know how much we love change, right? All right. Um, are there any other announcements that we need to make, be made aware of this morning? If not, then I am going to invite you to stand. And today we have to wave to Mapleton, Ross, Gray, and a bunch of people that are watching online. So stand, welcome each other, and welcome all of those that are watching online this morning. Good morning, everybody. And as long as we're up, let's sing.
you join me in the call to worship. Praise be to God who has given God's light to us. Honor and praise to God for God's most precious gift. The darkness that has enveloped the people has been pierced by the light. Let us rejoice in God's blessed goodness. With great joy and thanksgiving. Amen. Will you pray with me our opening prayer? Lord of mercy and joy, you have given to us the blessing of your Son, Jesus, who will make known your presence, forgiveness, and love to each one of us. Be with us this day and keep our hearts and minds open to receive your love and peace. Enable each of us to be the people of joy and hope as we encounter others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This is that part of our service where each and every week we have the privilege of going before God as a family of faith, knowing that when we pray together, there's power in our prayers. We generally start by sharing our joys and then our concerns, so I'll open it up and ask, does anybody have a joy that you would like to share today? Okay, all the way up here to D. Well, Roger has been home for uh, since Sunday, and um, that was 17 days out of 30 days that he spent in the hospital in Omaha, so we hope that's the end of that. We have three doctor appointments on this coming Wednesday down there, so I'm sure we'll find out some more things on it. So hopefully everything will be all okay and he can start driving. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. How about concerns, things we want to hold up before God? Well, I'm reminded that we have someone that's uh, struggling again with uh, strep throat. I don't know what we're going to do with him. Get well soon, because if you get your tonsils out, we'll have fun with that, pal. Uh, I know he's watching, so I have to do that. Um, you know... 
I, I think the um, Julie Kesterson and Amy and Emily and Carl and, and their whole family, I think we continue to hold them in our prayers. We have a lot of people right now that are struggling with um, all kinds of illness and sickness. We have a lot of people right now that the holiday season and all of these beautiful decorations and, and uh, the incredible time we have is a reminder for them of who's missing and, a, and it brings pain in their life. So for all of those, let's remember them all. Let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Gracious and loving God, divine lover of our souls, Lord, we come today to celebrate the most incredible gift that we can ever imagine, knowing that we can't even fully understand the size and the scope of the gift that you've given us. Lord, we celebrate with family and friends and this beautiful sanctuary. But Lord, in the midst of all of these blessings, we know that there are those that are struggling, those that are hurting because of the loss of a loved one, those that are struggling with disease or illness, those that are struggling in so many ways. And Lord, for all of them, we lift them up to you, asking for your care, your comfort, and your healing touch. But more than anything, Lord, we pray your presence and your peace upon each and every one of those that we have named this morning and all of those that are struggling silently, that they might know that however difficult today is, however dark the clouds might appear in this moment, that they would know that you are always with them, arm in arm, step for step, ready to carry them through even such a time as this. Lord, for all of this, we give you thanks and praise. Now let us join together on this very special morning with our brothers and sisters around the world today as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may stay seated for the next song. Let us celebrate our gifts today and our blessings. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing the doxology. Jesus. 
O Lord, on this day, more than ever, we can feel Your blessing. Lord, You've blessed us with the ultimate gift. And now today, we bring back a portion of those gifts and offer them back to You. Lord, bless these gifts that we might use them in whatever way You choose that might glorify Your name and help to build Your kingdom here on earth. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to talk a little bit about gifts today. Seems appropriate. So I'm going to read the Scripture for this morning and it's from James chapter 1. Every good gift, every perfect gift, comes from above. These gifts come down from the Father, the Creator of the heavenly lights, in whose character there is no change at all. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. Cody, you got a microphone? For just a minute, imagine that there is no financial restriction and you're going to get a gift. Okay, it's going to have a bow on it, so this isn't some intangible thing. Now, might be a great big bow, might be a great big package, but what would you what would be the ultimate gift for you? This has got to be something that you can wrap up. Okay, what's the what's the ultimate gift? It has to be wrapped. Well, it had a great big bow on it like the Lexus commercial, that'd be okay. <laughs> what would it be? Ultimate gift. Come on. All right, I'll go first. Um, for years, I told everybody that I wanted a Porsche. That's my thing. And do you know, two years ago, I got one. Pretty cool, huh? It's about this big, and they make a Lego, they make Lego Porsche, and then the kids put it all together for me. So I, I now have my Porsche, not exactly the way I'm going to have to wish more specifically, I guess. What else? What would you want? Why, oh, you guys, come on. That's, that's a great gift, isn't it? it would be. That would be perfect. What else? Well, I'm going to put a bow on it. Yeah. See, now, one thing that we won't do, Cody, we're not going to ask Kathy and Ann because I'm a little afraid of their answers. <laughs> so we're not going to ask them. Well, I thought I would help you, right? And, and, uh, uh, here, here, are the, here are some of the worst gifts according to uh, good housekeeping. These are the worst gifts that you can give. Something really, really meaningful but used. There's nothing wrong about gifting some vintage or retro pieces of clothing or decoration. However, when this comes straight from your house just because you don't want to throw it out any, and don't want it anymore, think twice about it. Don't give it just because you don't want it. I think I've gotten this gift. Fitness or health or exercise items. Unless you specifically agreed with your dear one, try to avoid giving them presents that pass the message, you know, you could look better. <laughs> Age or people inappropriate Christmas gifts. We, we can't really blame an elderly aunt or grandma that with the best of intentions gives a teenager a Care Bear book and crayons. So don't do that. Another one. Man, you make this list a lot. Um, <laughs> socks and underwear. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to get a pair of, um, what they call them? Cheesy socks. Uh, but some people can just keep giving plain old socks and underwear every year. So don't give those as gifts. So, so then you have to say, what's the, what would be a good gift, right? If those are bad gifts, what would, be a good, what would be a good gift? This year, 
here's, the, here's one of the most popular ones, a mini pocket projector. It's a little one and you buy it on Amazon for a couple hundred bucks and you can project. That's a good one. Um, I didn't know this one. Cloud slides, like pillows for your feet. These extremely comfortable cloud slides are all over TikTok. Is that right, Case? Okay. <laughs> And for good reason, they're lightweight, supportive, easy to clean, and versatile enough to wear around the house. Great gift. Great gift. How about this one? The $2 million puzzle. It's not hard to understand why this puzzle is a bestseller. Each one offers you a chance to win anywhere from a dollar to a million dollars. After completing the puzzle, you scan the resulting QR code to find out how much you win. Good gift. Shape-shifting box, av uh, available in 12 different designs. Each 3D magic cube transforms into 70 shapes and offers hours of mind-challenging entertainment. Another good gift. Rechargeable hand warmers. That's what I'm doing. Uh, for anyone who works outside or is constantly cold, Larry, maybe that's for you. Um, this nifty gadget is the perfect gift. After it's fully charged, it can heat up in seconds to offer hours of warmth. So those are the good gifts, right? Do any of those match what you would want to do? Yeah. Right? Right? But what if you got one of those really cool things? So you got the, you got the pocket projector and you opened it up and you looked at it, and you said, you know, I think I'd like that. And then you put it back in the box, wrapped it up, and put it on the shelf and never used it. That wouldn't make any sense, would it? Or, and I've tried to do this before with different gifts, uh, you open it up, you look at it, and you say, you know what? I'm going to save that for just the right time. I don't want to use it up. So I'll save it for the right time. We do that with gifts all the time, right? I don't want to use that up um, with uh, peanut chocolate peanut butter thing. I, I have one because I don't want to eat them all at once, so I'm going I'm to use them all at once. Well, if all the gifts, and here it is from James again, every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. These gifts come down from the Father, the Creator of the heavenly lights. So, so imagine that, the, the, that all of your blessings, all of our blessings in one way or another come from God. And especially today, we celebrate the most perfect gift. The most ultimate gift. Um, if I took a survey and I said, okay, how many people are interested in eternal life? Okay, that'd be where you'd raise your hand. Raise your hand. And if you didn't raise your hand, we have to talk. Uh, do you think that heaven would be a better place to go than hell? Yeah, I'm up for that gift, right? But how often do we take the gift? Now, it, it, the gift came in the form of a baby in a manger, so the gift wasn't really all that impressive looking. The gift wasn't wrapped in the best paper. The gift probably, you know, to some people wouldn't seem like this big deal. But we said, look, this is the coolest gift you could get this year. Every year, today, last night, we get this gift, this reminder that we have this gift, the ultimate, the coolest, the best gift possible, a gift that we all raised our hand that we wanted. A gift that lasts forever. And how do we treat our gift? That's pretty cool. And then we put it on a shelf, right? We don't, we don't take it out and exercise it every day. We don't take it out and use it every day. We don't take it out and, and just adore that gift every day. Instead, what we do is we put it on the shelf and we say, you know, I don't want to use it up like there's you know, a genie and three wishes. We say, I don't want to use that all up today. I'll just get it out when I need it. Right? That's what we do with Jesus. We, 
we, we can say, look, Jesus, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do what I need to do. And I'll come back to you when I'm ready. That's, that's, that's how we handle the perfect gift, the, the ultimate gift, the gift that lasts forever, the gift that uh, gives us the ultimate time in heaven. And we say, well, I'll, I'll come back to you when I need you. Imagine this, this, this uh, the, the, the shoes, what were they called? Cloud slides. I didn't even know what that was. Those could be the ultimate gift. They could be so comfortable and so lightweight that you never want to take them off your feet. But I had no idea. I didn't know what that was. Now think about your family. Your friends. And you have the ultimate gift that you know exactly what it is and it's this baby in a manger and you have friends and family out there that don't know what the gift is. They might really think it's a cool thing if they ever knew about it, but they didn't have any idea that that gift was given to them, for them, all the time. They didn't know that, that when their feet were hurting, they could slide into these cloud slides. They didn't know that when their life was in tough shape, that they could turn to Jesus for comfort because we never told them about it. See, with the gift, Jesus asks us, He says, go tell everyone you know that this gift is for them. Go tell everyone you know that this is the coolest gift you'll ever get. Go tell everyone you know this gift will never wear out. And you can use it all day, every day, forever. The cloud slides seem like a pretty good gift. My little Lego Porsche, pretty cool gift. But none of that is as awesome of a gift as a newborn child in a manger that came for you. That certainly requires us to tell people it's for everybody. Let's pray. Lord, on this special, holy, sacred day when we celebrate, You would give us this gift. This incredible, awesome, beyond imagination, perfect gift that lasts forever. Help us to tell all that we know that we would share the news with them that this gift is the perfect gift sent by you for us all. We pray all this in that name of that perfect gift. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. I am going to invite you to stand and we'll sing our closing hymn.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the light that began at creation continued through the witness of the prophets and has come to fullness at the birth of Jesus Christ be in your hearts and minds today. As you go from this place, may your spirits be filled with joy and hope for God's precious light has been sent for you. Go in peace and know that God's peace always goes with you. Go with the light of the world and that light will always go with you. Go with God and God will surely go with you. Amen. Go in peace.